Good afternoon and welcome to TL Physics and today I, my name's Sarah and today I'm going to go over harmonics and I'm going to go over harmonics in open and closed tubes. Now it's important to realise these are slightly different um, but the following rule applies that for a tube like this one the antinode must be at the entrance exit of the tube so the point which leaves the tube must be the point with the most energy. So we're going to talk about closed tubes first I'm going to talk about the harmonics in a closed tube. So, in the first harmonic, I have my reflection point, and I get to the first antinode, and as you can see, this is a quarter of a wavelength. When I go to the second harmonic, we go through it again, I must end on an antinode, and as you can see, this is not quite fully a wave, but it's about three quarters of a wavelength. On the third harmonic, again, one, two there, I have one full wavelength, and I have a quarter extra, so I have five-fourths of a wavelength. And it's important to know how the wavelength represents the, uh, the noise that's being made. So a long wavelength, okay, a long wavelength is um, a much deeper sound. So this has quite a long wavelength and we have quite a deep sound. Now this is slightly different for open tubes. Now open tubes are a little bit weird. There are things like flutes or piccolos or recorders. They're, they're at the epitome of an open tube. Um, pan pipes again and again the rule stands that there must be an antinode at the entrance and the exit so this changes things up a little bit here that I end up with trying to force an antinode here and here and this makes an open tube for this one have half a wavelength so in the same space that a closed tube would have a quarter of a wavelength I'm going to have a much smaller wave in the same tube because this tube represents half of it and this tube represents a quarter of it. So, we can represent it by this tube here. When it's closed, you get that kind of noise. When I open it, so it's now an open tube, I get a much higher pitch. And as we go down, this one represents the second harmonic again. I need to go to the next antinodes. I get a full wavelength. And for the last one, I get one and a half wavelengths. It is important that you're able to identify and draw each of these harmonics that are going on here. And also from these, be able to garner the actual wavelength of the uh, wave itself. So for example, if I told you this tube was one meter long, the first harmonic would represent a quarter of the wavelength. So a quarter of my wavelength is one meter. So my whole wavelength would be four meters. And that's what you need to know about closed and open tubes.